How's it going guys? My name is Jake Fogg and welcome back to episode number 23 of my Football Ninja 2020 journey here today with Leeds United and once again, just like the last episode, we're starting off on the page of Calvin Phillips. Um, you may be wondering why, what, what have I got to more to talk about him? I already talk about how much I love him and how fantastic he is. Well, if you do follow me on Twitter, by the way, at Jake Fogg, link is in the description if you want to go follow me over there. You may have seen that I tweeted out earlier today, look at this little bad boy up here made his England debut, that is right, I believe it came against Turkey, yeah you can see down in the bottom right, it came against Turkey, uh, Henderson picked up a little bit of a knock and he came on in the 48th minute, so yeah, hopefully for Calvin Phillips that is the uh, that is the first of many, but yeah, that's just a little, just a little something that I wanted to uh, talk about before this episode uh, started and also I've sent him on a leadership course. Uh, because I want to get that leadership up a little bit, as he is in fact currently the vice captain, and I see him being the future, uh, being the actual captain in the future, possibly next season or the season after. I, I don't know. It depends how this leadership course goes. I've never really used them before, so it'll be interesting to see if it works. And he's got a pre concern. That he's uh, starting to consider whether he should be looking to move to a bigger club. Please don't, Calvin. Please, please never leave. But anyway, there's been plenty to catch up on since we last met. So let's just quickly have a little uh, skim through. The, uh, the results in between cam in between camera? No, the results off camera. <laughs> so after our 6-0 demolition of Astana in the Europa League, we then had to face West Brom at home, one of the uh, bottom teams in the league at the moment. And we got things off to a great start. Montagna with a fantastic finish. He's been in unbelievable form. He's already double figures for the season. But yeah, West Brom at home, not a great team. And as you can see, uh, they managed to get a goal back. I'm not sure what the keeper was doing there in the 63rd minute. And um, yeah, nothing much really happened in this game until the 87th minute. A ball in from Alenia from the free kick and Ampadu heads home to give us a well-deserved 2-1 victory. I would have liked it to be a little bit more convincing, but it is what it is. We'll take the result, we'll move on. I'm not even going to bother showing the goals for this one. We played a fully rotated side against Rotherham away in the EFL Cup. League 1 Rotherham, I thought we'd be a lot better than we did. Uh, I thought we'd do a lot better than we did, sorry I should say. And they beat us 2-0. I had too much faith in a fully rotated side and we just did not perform. And unfortunately, Rotherham came away with a 2-0 win. It's a cup that I'm not really bothered about. So, I, I mean, with the Europa League, we've got enough fixture congestion as it is. And this just throws another spanner in the works. And I probably would have just played rotated sides throughout the entire tournament anyway. So, it doesn't really bother me. Then we went back to full strength against Norwich in the league, looking to bounce back. And a little bit of mistake from the centre-back, Montagnu pounced on it and got the only goal of the game to give us a 1-0 win against Norwich, who actually are doing quite well in the league. I think at the time of playing them, they were they were something like 5th or 6th when we played them in this game. So it was a good win. And yeah, we played really, really, really well. You can see they didn't really have that much of an opportunity. We were very good as there's some motorbikes driving past my flat, which is not ideal. <laughs> but yeah, we played very, very well and a very, very good win at the end of it. Then in the second game of our Europa League campaign was against Slavia Prague. And uh, Bu uh, Boyako, Boyako Saka finally, finally gets a goal contribution in about his sixth game <laughs> of the season for us. Montagnu manages to uh, somehow get a goal out of a massive goal mouth scramble for his second goal of the game. And then straight after that, literally a minute later pretty much, uh, Söderberg manages to bag his first goal for the club, his first ever senior goal, a fantastic moment for him. And then for goal number four, Montagnu manages to wrap up his hat-trick Davies gets the ball in, Montagnu there at the front post, hits it across the goalkeeper. He had absolutely no chance of saving that. Unfortunately, uh, Slavia Prague did manage to get one back at the end. I'm not really sure what happened there. Just no one really decided to jump with him, but a very dominant performance. Again, a little bit of rotation. Just a little shout out to Jamie Shackleton. I've been playing him at right wing back for the past few games, and he has been absolutely phenomenal. And I think I might be starting him in a few more games. Oh, I, he, can now play, uh, he can now play right wing back pretty comfortably um, but obviously he's not a natural yet but he's played very very well you can see his form over the last few games is 7.74 average rating he's got a 7.2 in the league and an 8.45 in the Europa League so you know I think uh, he deserves a little bit more of an opportunity he's been hard done by so far as Shackleton but he's not really developed uh, quite as much as I would as much as I would have liked him to uh, throughout the course of this save unfortunately and then finally, we went away to Spurs 
and uh, well things got off to the worst start possible Harry Kane firing it in at the near post just 51 seconds in and uh, at that point I thought we were going to be in for a very 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 long day but we did manage to bring one goal back Douglas crosses to Galeno who heads it into the bottom corner very very nicely and then in the 85th minute, Elenia bursting forward, plays the ball into Tyler Roberts. He gets himself one-on-one -on -one with the keeper and he manages to just squeeze it in at that far post. And I was oh, I was delighted, but then pretty much uh, straight from tick kickoff, long ball over the top, headed down to Kane, through to Dyer, finishes again at that near post. Pavlenka has a lot of uh, a lot of questions to answer, although he managed to get himself a 7 uh, 7.0 rating in today's game. But yeah, this was... I mean, Spurs were the better side, but we defended pretty well, to be fair. I wasn't too disappointed. I'm always happy to uh, come away with a draw against a team like Tottenham Hotspur. So, yeah, can't really complain. So that is, as you can see, a li quick little overview of the results. In terms of the league, we currently find ourselves in seventh position after eight games, three wins, four draws, one loss, uh, sat on 13 points. So very, very nice. We play Sheffield United today in the league, and then uh, we play Moscow in the Europa League. And then talking of the Europa League, obviously we're doing very, very well in our group so far. Nine goal difference, ten goals scored, one against uh, ourselves and CSK. Moscow have won both of our games so far. So already we've put ourselves in a very, very good position to qualify uh, for the knockout stages. And I have just remembered a little bit of business that I have done in between episodes. Aaron Hickey. Hickey? Yeah, Aaron Hickey. He's a right back and a left back. Uh, from Hearts, 4.9 million he cost me. You can see he's very strong with either foot. Uh, I think I'm most likely going to train him to be a right wing back. But yeah, for 4.9 million, he's got fantastic potential. Um, currently operating at a championship level, but he's only 19 years old. Plenty of room to improve, as you can see. He already goes in as my second and best left back. And in terms of right back, yeah, he'd be joint foot. I don't know why he's joint third right back when... Luke Haling's there. This is obviously a very old scout report and I've probably made a massive uh, error in signing him, but you never know. <laughs> uh, well, it is what it is, but no, I think he's got some he's got some fantastic attributes. I think he's a really, really well-rounded player and the fact that he can play both sides comfortably. Yeah, really, really happy with that. Valued at 6.75 million. He had a release clause of 4.9 million, so cannot really complain with that. Uh, obviously, a, a regular in the Premiership, uh, in the Scottish Premiership for Hearts. So yeah, I think he'll be a decent signing, a good backup option, potentially starting right wing back when Emerson leaves at the end of the season. But anyway, let's just get straight into today's game. First up, Sheffield United currently sat in fifth position. They're having a very, very good start to the season. And then in terms of the starting 11, why is Alfonso Davies... Oh God, I don't have a, don't have a fully fit left back. Why is Alfonso Davies in need of a rest? What happened? Did he play... I think it's probably because he um, played internationally for Canada very, very recently. So he is going to just sit out of this game completely today. And that's not ideal. Leif Davis has no fitness as well. Oh, God, what have I done? What have I done? Also, Saka so far has been such a disappointment. A, a 6.52 in the league is not good enough. He is not going to be starting today. I'm going to start Marilla on this left-hand side. Uh, but apart from that, I'm just going to have to risk Barry Douglas with a little bit of a knock. But apart from that, I'm pretty happy with how the uh, how the team lineup is looking. So it's Pavlenka in goal, Ampadu and Sistana at the back with Phillips just in front of them. Barry Douglas at left wing back, Shackleton right wing back, Bogus and McCalmont in the middle, Marilla on the left, Galeno on the right, Montagna up top. As a lone striker, Barry Douglas is lap lacking in match sharpness. I'm fully aware of that. Let's actually get Emerson on the bench in place of... Um, Leif Davis and oh, say Baron, don't you shouldn't be on the bench either. Um, who's fit? Soderberg, you're fit. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. I've not prepared well for today's game. <laughs> uh, they, what on earth is this formation, by the way? They've got Raja Nyngullen, 33 years old. His physicals are lacking a little bit, but he's what a player. What a player he is. Um, well, I don't know how to approach this game with a formation like that. Um... Go out there and give the fans their money's worth. I'm also going to switch. Because of the formation they played, it's very strange. I am going to switch Phillips to a halfback to start things off. See how that goes. Anyway, into the game. Also, uh, if you are enjoying the video, please do 
uh, consider leaving a like it really does help me out and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here or you are not uh, yet already subscribed it really does mean a lot to me and I just want to say thank you to everyone who has supported this series so far like I said it's the support on it has been so much better than I actually thought it was going to be when I started doing this series obviously I started off Cricket 19 and that doesn't really equate well with Football Manager it's two very different games as fortunately that goal for Sheffield United has been disallowed. It's a tight offside call, but we managed to get away with one there. We need to wake up. I mean, early on, you can say we definitely had the better of the game, but hopefully we can turn those chances into goals. As McCalmont in the middle, what a header, what a goal. Alfie McCalmont gets his second goal of the season, our first goal of the game, the assist from Montagnu. Great work down this right-hand side to get the ball in and pick out uh, the head, well, I assume it was the head of Alfie McCalmont. Yeah, the head of Alfie McCalmont in off the post. The keeper at full stretch couldn't quite reach it. And there we go. We take the lead at home to Sheffield United in this, well, in this Yorkshire derby. And there's a police car flying past my house at the moment. Well, not literally flying. You can probably hear the siren. That's not ideal. But 1-0 at half time going into the break. Very, very happy. Uh, I'm just going to say, don't get complacent out there. Just keep your heads. Come on, I need to see some big performances from the likes of Maria uh, Galeno, Saka. I need big performances from my winger. They've not really... How is your body language professional? I've never seen that before. His body language is professional. Okay. Um, that's interesting. Well, there's a, a lot of time has passed here. Barry Douglas is really struggling, but I can't really afford to take him off. Neither winger's doing anything at the moment. Let's just make a full switch on both wings. See if that can kick a little bit of life. Uh, into the boy, Saka down this left-hand side, can he do something useful, Montagnu in the middle, gets it back out, Saka crosses it to Mikic, back to Bogus, that's a great strike, and that's a great save by the Sheffield United keeper to keep Bogus out with a great strike from the edge of the box, the corner escapes, everyone, Phillips picks it up, picks out Sistani, plenty of space, Mikic, oh, I thought he would have gone for goal there, he was offside anyway, so it doesn't matter, there's just 15 minutes left in this game, I'm pretty reluctant to change anything, to be honest. Uh, a few bookings around, a few bookings across the board. I should probably look at sorting a couple of them out. Uh, do I want to bring on Alenia for Bogus? I think I will switch from a to that box-to-box -box midfielder. As a corner comes in, it's headed clear, and Alenia seriously lacking in any form of match fitness here. Takes it uh, down, whips it in, that's a great ball, but it is cleared away. Ampadu picks it up, thankfully. McCallum on Shackleton. He's been a star recently. Can he provide a goal today? Goes back to Phillips. Back to Shackleton. To McCallum on Phillips. In loads of space. Not Phillips. Shackleton's in loads of space. But Saka's on the ball now. Goes out left to Barry Douglas. Can he find a man in the middle? Montagnu. The cross is intercepted. It's headed out for a corner by the Sheffield United centre-back. Or at least I assume it was a centre-back. They've got Fellaini as well. What on earth is this Sheffield United team? Barry Douglas, I think he was offside there when he picked up the ball. He was indeed. Free kick is awarded to Sheffield United. As time is slowly ticking away, we're into injury time now. Just two minutes of it remain. And we've got a corner. It's headed clear by Sanderberg. Sistana picks it up. Back to Phillips. Goes to Sistana. He's got Mikic with him on this right-hand side. He gets it to him. Can he beat his man? He does. He gets it across the goal. But no one is there. Saka back to Barry Douglas. And Barry Douglas hit it. Oh, hits the post. And the ball is cleared. But that is going to be that. A fantastic performance. Disappointing that we couldn't convert more of our opportunities, but we really, really kept Sheffield United quiet. They've got Nico Williams as well. They've got a very, very interesting team, the Sheffield United, but we've done a fantastic job there of, uh, of keeping them quiet and to come away with a 1-0 victory, considering they're currently sat in fifth place. Very, very happy with that. Just tell the boys, very happy with the way with your performance out there. That sees us move up into seventh place. Obviously, still games to play. In fact, we were in seventh place at the start of this episode anyway, so we haven't changed position at all. <laughs> but the uh, the top six is, as you would expect it, apart from Sheffield United and Chelsea. You would expect them to be the other way around. Chelsea not having a great season at all, actually. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Let's just make sure nothing interesting. Six games unbeaten in the league as well. Fantastic stuff. Obviously, next up, we've got CSK Moscow in the Europa League. So I'll, I'll see you for that unless anything interesting happens uh, in these next five, six in-game in day, in days.
Okay, so time for our game against CSK Moscow. Once again, a quick little look at the table down here. A win here, in my eyes, would see us just about qualified uh, for the next round. Obviously, it, it's not confirmed that we would have qualified, but I think um, just because, obviously, Slavia Prague and S, uh, we have to still play Prague and Astana, and obviously they still have to play Moscow two more uh, once more. So, yeah, I think I think we've probably done a good enough job already. I mean. To have to be in this position after two games is fantastic. If we can make it three wins from three, uh, nine points, I think we should be able to pick up at least one more result in our uh, final three matches. So yeah, plenty of promise here. I'm going to make a few changes as I have been doing for these matches. Uh, let's see. I'm actually. I'm also again. I'm going to give Noan Kenny a little bit of a run out, and then in the middle, I'm going to start with Soderberg and Alenia. Obviously. If I need to change it, I will change it. But apart from that, I'm going to leave um, Alfonso Davis out of this as well, just because I still think he needs a little bit more of a rest. And I can't. Oh, for God's sake, I played Lee Davis in the other twenty threes as well. Oh God, my my planning has just been horrendous <laughs> in this episode. But anyway, the lineup is as follows: Pavlenka in goal, Kenny and Sistana at the back, Phillips just in front of him, Douglas left wing back, Emerson right wing back, Söderberg and Alenia in the middle, Maria on the left, Mikic on the right, Montagnu up top. And actually thinking about it, I can get I can get away with having Alfonso Davies on the bench. Uh, I'll have him on the bench in place of... I'm not sure who I'll have him on place of. I'll have him in place of Galeno. Um, yeah, because obviously he can play on the left wing if required. But anyway, let's get into the game. As always, a little bit of rotation with these Europa League matches. I'm pretty confident this is... Uh, it's another strange formation. Two very strange formations uh, that we've come up across today. And obviously, as it is a two-striker formation, Calvin Phillips will be switched to that halfback role. And let's get into it. Let's see. Let's see if we can make it three wins from three. Obviously, CSK Moscow, the toughest team uh, in the group, in my opinion. I believe that they were the first seed. So if we can get a win here, that'll be fantastic. And Douglas on the ball, this left-hand side. alenya has got it. <sighs> Just whistles over the bar. That might have might have clipped, might have grazed um, the top of the bar there. But a good sign early on. We're controlling possession well. We've had one more shot than them. But it's been a relatively cagey affair by the looks of it. As Douglas takes a free kick. Montagna, free kick corner. And Montagnu headed it just over the bar. Two decent opportunities so far for ourselves. Which is uh, good to see as this first half has absolutely raced away. Just five minutes remaining. And yeah, well, that was okay. That went by quickly. Uh, I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna tell them I'm far from pleased with what I've just seen. Give them a little bit of a, give them a little kick up the ass as a Steiner and Slavia Prague are actually drawing a free kick here just inside their own half. Magnussen on the ball goes all the way back to Akinfeev in goal. He's pressured, but he gets it clear. Mario Fernandez heads it down to Sigurdsson back to Fernandez. Is he going to bring it forward? He does, but Barry Douglas gets a good foot in. But Mario Fernandez picks the ball back up, plays it to the centre back. Kenny clears it, Mikic on it, heads it down to Emerson, back to Mikic, I don't even know who's got the ball here, Emerson now bringing it forward, can he get Can he get some space, can he get a ball in, goes inside to Soderberg, goes back to Phillips, to Alenia, Phillips, goes out right to Soderberg, back to Phillips, don't know what to do with it, goes all the way out left to Maria, Douglas down this left hand side, can he get a ball in, he can, no one's there, Emerson, oh, Emerson just strikes it over the bar, from the edge of the box and oh, we've been playing well we've been playing very very well we just need to convert these chances that we're getting but once again neither wingers are having particularly good games Barry Douglas with a free kick <sighs> Akinfeev just tips it over the bar very very nice free kick from Barry Douglas there plays in the corner it's headed clear Phillips picks it up he gets tackled, but he manages to keep a hold of the ball. Goes all the way back to Pavlenka in goal. Just really like just seeing Slavia Prague winning. Um, 4-1 as well. But now we're still on the attack. Mikic down this right-hand side goes inside to the right wing back. Emerson all across to Douglas Maria. Douglas back to Phillips. Just holding the ball very, very nicely here. Mikic is beaten out, but Emerson picks up the loose ball. This highlight is going on for a very, very long time. If there's not a goal at the end, I'll be very disappointed. So sort of back to Emerson. Played in Alenia. There we go, Alenia. Oh, he's been unlucky this season as a Lenny. He's not had much of an opportunity because McCalmont has done so well for me. But he's got the opportunity to start here. And he's rewarded um, 
well, he's rewarded me with a goal, which with, I assume, his head. No, with his right foot it, on the volley into the near post. A fantastic little finish. Well taken. Sudaba picks up a yellow card. I'll probably look at taking him off in a minute. So Lenya, can he grab himself a second? No, he goes all the way out to Douglas on his left-hand side. And the ball is cleared. But I'm not really sure what CSK Moscow have done there. Kenny plays it to Phillips. Out to Emerson on his right-hand side. He's got Mikic in front of him for support. He tries to be the man, gets tackled, gets it back. Mikic, can he get the ball in? He does Maria at the back post. There we go. Pealo, Pealo, Pele, Pele, Peleo, <laughs> Maria. I'm assuming it's the LL makes like a Y sound, like David Villa. But he gets his first goal of the season, his first goal for the club. And to be honest, that's probably Mikic's first assist of the season as well. Great ball to the back post. And it's headed in calmly um, by the young Spaniard. I'm going to bring Bogus on in the middle. Um, I'm going to get Tyler Roberts on as well up top for a little bit. But apart from that, I'm going to leave things as it is. My goodness, this Dykes, he's got a 4.5 rate at the moment. Unsurprisingly, been dragged off. There's just 10 minutes remaining in this game. We've been dominant so far. We've been dominant in this competition all season, in all of our games so far. And today has been no different. Time is ticked away. There's full time. It's a 2-0 win against CSK Moscow. A great result. Very happy with the result and the way that you played. Ah, well, press conference. Send my assistant to the press conference. We received 490k. So, have a little look at the group now. Six points clear of Slavia Prague. Uh, three points clear of CSK Moscow. And nine points ahead of Astana. Yet to pick up a point. Oh, poor souls. Poor, poor souls. Um, with regards to the next episode, now this could be a, it's an interesting one actually, isn't it? the next episode. I don't really know where to come back. Um, uh, Slavia, Prague and Astana will be playing again. So I'll probably come back, actually yeah, I'll come back for Astana and Manchester United, I reckon around about there, because I think that I'm assuming that Slavia, Prague will get a result against Astana meaning that if we win that game against Astana, that should see us qualify for the next round of the Europa League. So I think that's probably a, a good place to uh, kind of come. And obviously, Manchester United away in the league is always going to be a good game uh, between, well, for ourselves. So yeah, that is that is where I'm going to finish off today's episode. It's been a good one. I've enjoyed today's episode, but yeah, hope you enjoyed it as well. If you have enjoyed, please do be sure to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new around here, and I'll catch you in the next episode.